Well, good morning. It's, it's uh, one minute after 10, so we will go ahead and get started. Um, for those of you that don't know, I'm Megan Greenland, and this is Bill Rochelle. We're with the Associated Builders and Contractors of Arkansas, and we're so happy to be hosting our first chapter-hosted Zoom meeting that's open to our membership. And we're, we're very excited for our guests to be with us today and uh, looking forward to hearing their insight and some of their perspective. So uh, this is the new norm as we've been talking about and we're just embracing it. I know we've, uh, we've had a lot of webinars uh, from a lot of different entities coming out, a lot of Zoom meetings, uh, but we were trying to be selective in what we, what we pick for our Zoom meetings for our members. And this was a popular one. We've got about uh, well over 60 people that, that have signed up today and we're just thrilled. So thank you for taking time out of your morning to be with us. And uh, if you have any questions throughout uh, the discussion, we do have the chat feature available. So just type out your question and Bill will read those uh, throughout and we'll get those questions answered for you. But without further ado, I'm going to social distance myself a little and uh, hand it off to Bill Rochelle to introduce our guest today. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Megan. And good morning. Like Megan said, uh, glad to have you all here today. Uh, before we get started, I want to thank Jonathan Adams with uh, uh, NAB Holtz. He's a chairman of our Central Young Professionals Group, and, and he helped us get our speakers uh, this morning lined up. So, um, Jonathan, I appreciate your help on this. Um, again, we're honored to have uh, two very well-respected architects here in the state of Arkansas join us. Uh, I was telling these guys earlier, and some of you may have heard, uh, we had another chapter that had something similar to this. They had a United States Senator um, and they had about 40 people attend. Um, then when they for the architects, they had like 80. So again, it tells you how, how popular these guys are. <laughs> uh, joining us uh, this morning is uh, Wesley Walls. He's a principal uh, with Polk Stanley Wilcox and glad to have Wesley here. Uh, and then we have Josh Siebert. He's an associate with Modus Studio Architecture and Prototyping. So. Guys, welcome this morning. I'll let each of you take, take just a minute, uh, introduce yourself a little more, and then we'll, uh, uh, we'll get started. We've got a few questions that uh, some folks have sent in to us, so if you'll do a quick introduction, we'd appreciate that. Uh, well, good morning. Uh, thank you for allowing us to come and talk a little bit, give us uh, a, a forum to talk a little bit about what we're seeing right now. Um, uh, like you said, uh, my name is Josh Siebert. I'm with Modus Studio, an architecture firm here in Northwest Arkansas. Um, I co-founded it uh, with Chris Barabo, my partner, in 2008, and so we've been going on for a little over 11 years. Uh, we're a firm of about 31 people, and so we currently are working like most of you, remotely, and um, all, uh, most everybody is um, working from homes, and we're finding that this new norm is becoming very interesting and different. Um, we don't really specialize in one project type. We We've done a lot of different projects and I recognize a few in the crowd uh, that we've worked with before as well. So um, uh, we've, we've done projects from all scales, uh, literally things that are $50,000 up to, we actively have a few projects that are in the several uh, um, 80 to $90 million projects in all around the country. So we're, we're finding ourselves doing work in all different time zones as well. So a little bit about us. Thanks, Josh. Uh, I'm Wesley Walls. I've been practicing for about uh, uh, 28 years. Uh, I've been with, uh, I'm with Polk Stanley Wilcox. We have about 50 people uh, between our Little Rock and, and Fayetteville offices. I'm in Little Rock. Um, like Josh's practice, we're not like most firms in our region, our state, we're, we're pretty, we're generalist. You know, we, we, our work is diverse. Um, we are doing more and more work outside of our region, uh, as Josh has mentioned, so that's, that's stretched us a bit. Um, and we also have had to, you know, adjust like everyone else has about how to work remotely. You know, some of that was a, a trend anyway. You know, we've, I think all of us have been involved a bit in working remotely and using web conferencing, and, and I'm sure we'll talk a bit more about this perhaps later, but, uh, you know, much like today, I think everybody's you know, as we've sort of been forced into it, I think we've all realized it's, it's surprisingly productive in a lot of ways. And so I think that's, you know, that's changed. Uh, I think that's, that's going to be one of those things that has long-term implications on the way that we practice, not just, not just in the specific arch architectural realm, but I think in the design and construction industry as a whole, I, I think that, I think that'll be kind of a positive outcome of that. So um, I'm, I'm uh, honored to participate with Josh today and just giving a little bit of insight to you guys on, on uh, what's been happening so far and, and maybe just uh, 
you know, uh, making some presumptions about, about what this might look like moving forward. So thank you. Outstanding. Thank you, guys. And uh, like I said, just honored to have you here this morning. Um, looks like we've got 65 folks on, so uh, glad to have everybody, uh, our ABC members that have joined us this morning as well. We'll just hop right into the questions, and uh, we'll go with the first one that we have. And uh, that is, what is the status of major projects uh, in your market? The ones that are open, closed, delayed. Uh, I'm sure you may have had some that have been canceled. So, uh, Wesley, if you'd speak on that. Uh, yeah, I, I thought a bit of, about this. You know, um, you, you know, you guys are certainly aware of construction. You know, there's there's quite a buffer between uh, action and reaction when it comes to construction. Uh, certainly more so even than design. You know, we haven't had a tremendous immediate impact on work. Uh, just because of that momentum attribute. Um, when I'm thinking uh, to, to large capital projects we're involved with in central Arkansas and even in northwest Arkansas, you know, we've not had anything of significance delayed or, or, or canceled. Uh, we've had a few things you know, early in the process that have been, been, been put on hold, but you know, Bank OZK headquarters is, is, is essentially complete and wrapping up. Uh, Little Rock Southwest High School is rapidly uh, working to completion you know, to open this fall. Uh, Arkansas Arts Center certainly isn't stopping, you know, so there's lots of things that are, that, that continue to move from a construction standpoint that we're involved with. And uh, even from a design standpoint, I'm working on some, some projects in, in Northwest Arkansas, those are moving ahead. So, uh, you know, we haven't had a lot of outright cancellations. In fact, we've even uh, uh, picked up some work uh, even out of state during this. Uh, but there have been a few things that have been, we were awarded uh, one project that uh, we were notified about, but then it was, we were told it would be delayed for, for three to six months. The other projects moving uh, ahead rapidly in Florida that we're working on. And so, uh, you know, generally, you know, the immediate impact has, other than just having to change the way we practice as far as working from home, uh, the immediate impact on our, on our revenue and workflow has not changed tremendously. I think our concern and I'll let Josh speak to this as well, of course, but I think our concern is, is more about, um, uh, you know, what does this look like, um, you know, you know, moving, moving forward. So, and I think that's another question. So rather than jump into that, I'll, I'll pause there. So. No, I, I think I kind of echo a little bit of what Wesley says is that, um, you know, we, we as a practice try to hold a three month to six month duration of projects ahead of where we're at. Uh, for things like this, I think uh, a lot of us on this call has lived through the 09 and earlier moments in time where it, it pays to make sure you're diversifying your portfolio of work. And so we, we really work hard at that. Uh, we do a lot of different types of projects. We've not seen a lot of projects put on hold, if anything, um, and we'll talk more in depth, but the K-12 market seems like, hey, we're not in school, so let's go faster. We've got a lot of pressure on a lot of the K-12 some of the other bigger development projects had wheels in motion already. And so they didn't feel like this, whether it's two months or six months is going to affect them as much. So we've had ourselves kind of pushing forward and, and making sure that we're hitting deadlines. If anything, I feel like the pressure of performing faster is now, uh, you know, there's a preconceived notion that, Hey, you know, if you're not traveling, can you get this done even quicker? Um, what we find is uh, much like probably what you're experiencing is that you're communicating a lot more now. You're having to take more time out and do more and more meetings of coordination within your own teams um, and then to be able to get the practice done. So, um, you know, like you said, we, we've spent a lot of time over the last few months um, with projects of these skills. We have some that are, you know, like I said earlier, $80 million projects that um, they don't seem like they're hesitating at all. I think we've had one project be put on hold. We've signed up two or three small projects that were on the fence about when to move. And then at the same time, we've had a few that we, we've been awarded, but they want to pause for just a moment. And what that means is probably a two month time frame. Mm -hmm. they're, they're just saying, let's, let's see what May looks like. Let's see what June looks like um, from their perspective. But all in all, I feel like you know, we're pretty um, excited about the potential because I think that the work's still there um, and we feel pretty confident that the work is going to continue. Um, if anything, we're, we're now looking at, you know, what's, what's going to be the fall. Mm -hmm. 
And Josh, I'll come back to you with this question here. You had, you had mentioned uh, briefly about school. Um, with classes being canceled for the rest of the year, do you see school districts, schools trying to get their projects started earlier um, since they are out of class? Yeah, for sure. We, you know, we've bid three projects in the last four weeks, um, and they're ranging from HVAC to re-roof um, to uh, small uh, renovations. What we have found is that the industry looks to be somewhat resetting. Uh, I would say that uh, we're finding that the numbers that what we're projecting are coming in right at or even a little bit below uh, with the thirstiness of the market saying, hey, we need to make sure we have plenty of work going forward in the next few months. Schools have kind of got word of that and they, they, they know that they're funded in a different capacity than most people. So a lot of their projects have been in preparation for a year prior to when it hits the market. So they've already been funded and they've got their money and they're ready to move forward. So they're, if anything, they are pushing us a little bit more. I, I feel like if it, uh, most people are asking for it to be done faster and, you know, can we go ahead and get it out to market while we're during this time because schools are not in session. Wesley, I'll, I'll turn to you to answer that question now if you'd, if you'd like. Yeah, I think there's been a bit of pressure with that. Um, we've historically done a lot of K-12 K, K work, as, as Josh alluded, that certainly Modus Studio does. We don't have a lot of that work going on now, but we do have a very, you know, I mentioned uh, Little Rock Southwest High School, $100 million plus uh, project. You know, there's a lot of pressure for that project to get finished just, you know, just in time for school to start in the fall. Um, and we have seen a few institutional uh, clients who, have you know, want to take advantage of this time. Hey, this is a perfect time. <laughs> you know, it's difficult to do work, uh, particularly with, you know, even higher education clients. Um, it's difficult to do work between semesters and that kind of thing. So we've seen some of that uh, pressure as well to, to maybe, uh, you know, maybe accelerate a little bit of work in that regard. So I, I would agree with that. All right. Um... What about the, the backlog of construction? How is that, how is that being affected? Um, you know, I don't know. Uh, this might be a good place to fit this in. Bill, I mentioned that I, I was able, I think before everybody joined, I was able to sit in on a, a national webinar a week ago today with, with uh, National AIA about the economic outlook and implication for firms. And so uh, this is more related to, to, to design firm revenue, but I think that has obviously a direct impact on construction revenue. If you don't mind, if I can hear you guys and share just a few statistics they shared, I think that'd be, I think that'd be helpful for everyone. These are national statistics. And so take it with a caveat as you might need to adjust it for, for our region and our market. But um, there, there's a common thing and Josh will be familiar with this, the AIA billings index they release every month. Um, this just tracks month on month, how much billings increase or decrease and it dropped 20%. Uh, in one month and new contracts dropped 30% and both of those were the most ever recorded in that short amount of time. So that's not a good trend. <laughs> um, backlog, you mentioned backlog, AIA backlog, and that is our revenue projections have, have dropped from six months to five months on a national level. Uh, uh, they, they also surveyed firms by region on what they expected their, re what the revenue impact would be uh, from, from COVID-19. Uh, uh, that varied, uh, the, the uh, South's anticipated revenue decline this quarter is minus 16%. The good thing about, the only upside about that is the South and the West were, uh, were, the, were the areas of the, of the country that were projecting the least amount of revenue decline, which is a positive thing. And virtually all firms have implemented some type of, uh, you know, staffing changes relative to, you know, just, just cautionary, you know, hiring, you know, either a hiring or salary freeze. Uh, that kind of thing. Um, they also uh, surveyed firms about what their perception was. Um, you know, so take this for what it's worth. This is you know just a survey of people's perceptions on what what this economic decline might look like. A third of firms expect it to be serious or devastating, but half of them expect it to be serious but manageable. So I think there's a lot of concern in our industry. You know, just you know, you know, as you guys know, for the most part, uh, or in a large part anyway, you know, building a building is a discretionary endeavor by most of our clients, right? And so uh, I think we're all a bit uh, impacted by uh, uh, both real and perceived economic trends. And uh, certainly firms, I think, are cautious. 
probably rightly so. You know, I think everybody in a way is, you know, everybody's still a little, a little tender from, from the downturn we had 10 years ago or so. And so uh, perhaps some of this is colored a bit by just uh, people being a little uh, overly cautious about that. But I think there's a fair amount of concern, uh, you know, from, from firms nationwide and in our region about, about how this might impact our backlog and, and work coming up. Uh, they did mention, I'll say one last thing, market type impacts. Uh, someone asked the question on a, on a they had some online uh, chat feature there. Someone asked about, uh, you know, what market type, uh, what market types would be impacted least and most by this kind of downturn. And they said the two best market types to sort of that they, they predict, AA predicts to weather uh, this economic downturn. And if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, this was almost the same as it was in 08, 09. And that is, they think healthcare and education are best suited to sort of be resistant to the economic winds. And worst, unsupply, unsurprisingly, would be retail and hospitality. So uh, those were two areas of concern. So I don't know if that hadn't really directly answer your question, uh, but uh, I thought I'd share, this seemed like the right time to share some of that national data. As far as our concern on backlog of construction, uh, you know, I think Josh and I've already you know, shared with you guys that, you know, we haven't seen an immediate impact and, and perhaps that's not surprising. I think our collect, collective concern and, and certainly in our practice is uh, really more about what's going to happen in six to nine months. You know, what work would we have been working on in six to nine months that should have been released now that's not being released because of concerns? And there may be work that was out there that we don't even know about that didn't, you know, that didn't happen because of, you know, people didn't pull the trigger. So, um, you know, our backlog is, uh, hasn't been impacted tremendously yet. Um, I just think it remains to be seen how confident, you know, our market types and our clients are in our region to continue to, to execute uh, work. Yeah. And I'd, I'd probably say very similar things. I think that we find ourselves in a position that um, we do our best that even when you have a lot of work, we're pursuing more work. And for things like this, uh, we actively try to keep, uh, in our practice, around 40 projects going at any given moment, um, and that can range in scale, uh, sometimes very small. And, you know, as uh, the group said, you know, we, we have a prototyping arm that is kind of a shop component, so we do small fabrication. Um, it kind of di diversifies our body of work, so we can fabricate um, a lot of the different components to our buildings. We don't ever pretend to be a GC ourselves. We're not attempting to do that. But we try to serve, uh, the majority of our work is 40, I'd say 40% 40 uh, multifamily, 40% K-12 at different capacities. And then the other 20% is a wide range of different types of work. And um, we have not seen a decline in any of those market sectors. While we're not specialized in any of them, I mean, you can see that we've done things that are unique, like the treehouse um, and different types of projects. We, we're just sitting at that moment where what does six to nine months look like? Uh, we know that we're good for six months and we've been getting inquiries, but the backlog for us is not uh, as impacted just yet uh, because again, our duration, we try to space things out uh, in a way that it kind of helps regulate and, and calibrate as we go. Um, that's just part of our policy to do our best to make sure that not only are we taking care of our clients, but we're also thinking big picture and uh, when we take on more work. Uh, a lot of our, our clients are repeat clients, so they're multiple phases or they're K-12 with three or four different scopes of work. So we've been really working hard to work with schools, school boards to calibrate when the duration of this project is over with and the next one starts. And so those are some things that I think we've used in our kind of toolkit of how do we weather the storm, you know, whether it's spacing some things out or helping when uh, if they're kind of slamming all the projects in immediately, um, does that make sense? You know, at the same time, you know, can we do it in a way that's more effective as a big picture? And as you can imagine with the K-12 market, you know, most everything wants to happen over the summer months. And so uh, if anything right now we are looking at, well, the school system might change and the way it looks might change, classrooms might change. Um, and we've all been impacted by how even the learning is now changing that uh, we're gonna see more flexibility. And I think the spaces that we design will be changing as well. Um, I, I, I've already started getting requests on what does that mean? And I think that might be a question that will be brought up here in a little bit as well. 
Yeah, Josh, what a great segue. We'll go ahead and, and, and hop to, uh, to that question. Um, will COVID-19 change design elements for commercial building, a safety, infection control, quarantine space, et cetera? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm convinced it will. I think that uh, the way we're going to look at spaces now is a little bit differently. I think the, you know, I, the trend has been for the last numerous years is open plans, right, and being able to work as uh, a group of people. Um, I don't want to go back to a cubicle life. I've not been in that life, but um, I, I can see that there's different spaces going to be changing for sure, whether it's you know, looking at the design in a more intently manner where how do you work with small groups? How do you work with one-on-ones? Um, how do you provide bigger conference spaces for people? I do think there will be an impact. I haven't had direct um, requests just yet uh, from anybody that say, hey, we want to relook at or start fresh with the way we've designed up to this point. But I have to believe that there's going to be an impact and a change. I think flexibility in the work schedule is going to change greatly by this. I agree. I agree. Leslie? Well, Bill, my, my internet flaked just quick for about 10 seconds when you're asking your question. So can you repeat the question? I assume it had to do with work environments or, or design implications. Well, will COVID-19 change design elements for commercial buildings, i.e. safety, infection control, quarantine space, et cetera? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a fair question. You know, it's, 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 it's completely different, but not dissimilar to things that came up and, you know, you know, even from think about 9-11 terrorist attacks. How does that impact how we travel? You know, people predicted that would also impact how people traveled or, or would they travel if they could do teleconferencing. And so, um, you know, I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a completely valid question to ask and certainly things will change. I think it's a bit of a, uh, it's a bit of a, a bit of an unknown how much, how much of the immediate, immediate reactions will become permanent design uh, trends. Um, we, um, you know, we do quite a bit of, of, of corporate office development, corporate office headquarters and that kind of thing. And we uh, have several under construction and uh, several in design. And we've already had questions, um, one of which I'm, I'm leading. We've already had a question about, hey, um, and we're right in the middle of, of schematic design on a large office building. And the question is, hey, how does this impact our workflow? You know, our clients are already asking the question, what does this mean with respect to mechanical systems, filtration? You know, uh, the trend for a long time, as Josh, you know, implied, has been, you know, you know, open office and benching and collaborative spaces. And, of course, all of those things that I think most people felt, felt were important to workflow in everybody's industry, including construction, about just not being walled off, but being more, uh, uh, more collaborative, more engaged, uh, more uh, touchdown places where people could meet and, and interact. And so those very things I think that we all felt were important all of a sudden are called into question about social distancing. Um, I certainly think, uh, to Josh's point, I, I think, and I don't know that this is a negative at all, but I do think, you know, this, this idea of even what we're doing today uh, with respect to doing uh, web calls and virtual meetings, I, I think, frankly, has been surprisingly effective. And I think most people realize, hey, you know, this, this actually works pretty well, even to have a meeting in your metro area or whatever, so driving 30, 40 minutes for, for a one hour meeting, it's so much more efficient for everybody to just join in their device. And, you know, and I think it's effective. I think things like that will be, you know, I think they'll be impactful. I think those will be, I think some of those flexible work hours that Josh mentioned as well, I think, and just virtual meetings, I think those things are probably uh, going to be more ingrained in our workflow. I'm a little more suspect about um, physical implications to building design. You know, I think people's, you know, I think if we look back on humanity, we have a short-term memory, right? Um, uh, I hope we all agree. I, I'm confident that at some point in the near future, we'll either come up with an effective treatment or a long-term uh, uh, vaccine for this. And so when that, when that concern is removed and there is a treatment, you know, is that really going to necessitate permanent physical changes to building designs moving forward. I, I don't know. Uh, I tend to be a little bit more suspect about how much of that kind of thing will be permanent. But I think it's certainly, it's, it's been such an impact on everybody's psyche and it's impacted everybody worldwide so much. I think these questions will be asked. It's just, it's hard to know how much it'll impact it. I think from a, a you know, I think a, even a bigger question, uh, 
you know, a school design, you know, how does it impact uh, large uh, spaces and, and, you know, a lot of, you know, schools are involved with lots of, you know, cafeteria, sporting events, that kind of thing. Uh, I think those will, those will be questions that come up too. So it's hard to say, I think it'll be interesting. Um, I'd like to think in some ways uh, a lot of good will come from this. Yeah, I hope so too. I know just here at ABC, we have seen, you know, a, a change with the Zoom meetings. I was talking to somebody the other day, and I think as as you go forward, I mean, I think you're going to look at, you're going to see companies that, that use the Zoom meetings instead of paying for somebody to fly to New Orleans and right. airfare, you've got the, the hotel, you've got the meals and entertainment. I see this as a, a, a new way of doing business uh, here. So, mm-hmm. um Another question we had was, uh, are your design times changing? Do you, do you see that, uh, your design times changing? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely feel like um, the desire is that they would want us to speed up, but the coordination actually takes longer during this process in my mind. We, we have a lot of OAC meetings over the last few weeks uh, across time zones, and we're finding that that works, but we have partnering firms that we work with, and San Francisco and different areas of the country. And in my mind, um, you know, it's just a lot harder to, um, to work at a full capacity. And even though everybody is trying to be as optimal as possible, the distractions of being in your home environment uh, around others, uh, maybe children that are at home, they do have an impact. And, and I feel like uh, duration of design schedule is is impacted. I have not equated that or justified that to ownerships just yet, but I do feel like, you know, we're, from my perspective, we're going to be fighting for more time to be able to do it right and proper because we're not around each other all the time. We're not reviewing it the way we normally would as a group or being able to communicate. Our office is ran kind of in an open office environment, and we've done that really by design so that everybody is involved into projects and they can kind of plug in. Well, when you're kind of isolated like this at this point, you find that you're uh, not as not as efficient as you once were, or it's longer to coordinate with somebody about a question here and there. So I do feel like it's going to impact some schedules. I, I'm not using it as an excuse just yet. I think what we are looking at it is it is a real concern that we have is that while the desire is to get it done faster, it might take actually a little bit more time for us to be able to complete things the way we once did. Yeah. Yeah, I think Josh is right. You know, the reality is, um, you know, sort of a uh, con- conflicting pressures. I think clients are pushing us to to move ahead qu- quickly, uh, but on the other hand, I think everybody recognizes this. Uh, you know, there are things to learn from this process, but it's definitely not as efficient. Uh, you know, we we I know Josh has a great group of, of, of folks at his at his shop at his shop, and we got a great group as well. And I know everybody's well intentioned to be efficient and effective but it's not optimal, um, uh, particularly with people in different life phases. You know, a lot of our staff, uh, you know, they're, if they have kids, they're, they're, they're younger kids. And so they're, I mean, you guys know this, they're, they're trying to work, but they're also having to administer school. And, 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 and it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a conflicting interest thing. You know, it's, it's interesting because for me, my kids are older. I have a son who's a sophomore in college. He's now home, of course, uh, doing work from home and a junior in high school. And of course, they're not, uh, they're self-reliant, so it's not been an impact to me. In fact, uh, it's been very productive for me uh, at home because I don't have a lot of distractions, but that's not true for everyone. It is definitely a disruption. And I think, I think it's kind of hard to deny that a lot of levels we're not as efficient as we could be, uh, you know, in a collaborative environment. You know, we just, uh, you know, just you know, six months ago, moved into a new Little Rock office, which was optimal for us. We had been in a, a space that was not ideal for a long time. And so we went from a great new collaborative space to all of a sudden having to work from home. And so it's been been quite a shift. But um, we haven't had a lot of, to, 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 to what Josh said, we haven't had to, uh, you know, defend that yet. Uh, or or I don't know, we haven't had a direct impact on a project design timeline yet. But it has been a bit... Uh, it has interrupted, I think, efficiency a bit, for sure. Absolutely. Just want to remind everybody, we do have the, the chat feature enabled. So if you have some questions that you want to send in to us, um, we'll have our, our, our guys answer those. 
Um, also, I'm going to interrupt and remind everybody that this session is being recorded. So I know a few of you have texted me and asked if it's being recorded. So we didn't actually answer that in the chat, but yes, we are recording it. Um, real quick, and I think Wesley, I think Wesley might have froze again. Uh oh. Well, yeah, he looks. He looks like he's very. <laughs> what? You still there, Wesley? There he is. I am. I can see you guys. Can you hear me? I can yeah. see. I could hear you the whole time. I was just okay. <laughs> frozen. You're there with your eyes closed. It's like <laughs> I was um, taking a quick nap. <laughs> and and Josh, I'll turn this. I'll ask you this question. And Wesley, I'd like you to weigh in. I think you may have touched on it um, a little bit earlier. Um, what is A and E doing to prepare for reshoring industry? And what type of market sector are they hedging on as a boom? Mm. Kind of a long question. I can repeat that if you'd like for me to. Yeah, no, I, I think um, I would have to say that at the end of the day, a lot of what we want to do is business as usual. We try to attack all markets to stay diversified. Uh, we know that that's important. We work really hard on the K-12 and higher education levels because of uh, the stability of that particular sector. Um, the yeah. The bigger projects that are development driven, we know they flux quite a bit based on the market, based on finances, based on um, needs. And housing is a big one, I mean, uh, around the entire country. Um, over the last uh, month and a half, we've signed up more multifamilies in California and other areas that seem to be shielded from some of this because of federal grants. So we're continuing to pursue those markets and stay involved in that um, and keeping our, our body of work uh, flexible for that. On the inside, uh, you know, we wanna make sure that we can keep people employed and, and stay as aggressive as we can so that we don't have to change anything internally. So we're, we're trying to make sure that we're paying attention to these markets so that our employees are staying where they need to be and, and we're trying to adapt much like everybody else is. Um, we're kind of not on the front lines when it comes to one-on-one -on -one contact. We can kind of live in this realm for so much time, uh, whereas I think some of the people in the group here today are definitely having to get out and they're, they're you know, doing physical work and having to be around. You can't pour concrete from the house. You know, we know that. We, we're very much keen to understanding what, what the real reality is. I think what we've been doing with even our OAC calls is just keeping – uh, or OAC meetings is just keeping distance and understanding the impacts of things like that. So I think for us, it's about resiliency first. It's about staying flexible to what we have to do to get the job done. And then two, really trying to stay paying attention to those types of sectors that are flourishing and staying actively uh, pursuing that. We don't do a lot of uh, retail. Uh, we've done a few before, but we don't do a lot. Uh, hospitality, we hardly ever do any hospitality, um, but those are just market sectors that we've never pursued that much uh, because of what they are. Um, we are definitely, uh, much like uh, Wesley and his group, we're, we're, we're companies that really don't do a lot of corporate entities, or at least we don't. We don't have a lot of corporate clients like a Starbucks or, you know, 21C or, you know, Holiday Inn or, you know, casinos or things like that. We, we do a lot of different projects that are smaller and closer to home. And, um, you know, I still feel like Arkansas is a bit of a bubble. When I talk with my partnering firms in San Francisco and Northern California and Nebraska, um, they're seeing different impacts. In fact, uh, the San Francisco market is drying up for them. Uh, they, they, they're struggling to keep work because everyone wants to put it on hold. But I think that particular market is impacted differently than Northwest Arkansas. Their numbers are vastly different. They're a stay, uh, stay in place um, state right now. So um, that's kind of how we look at it. We're, we we want to be aggressive as possible and do our best to stay paying attention to it as a person that not only designs, but also has to market and go out and shake hands. That new shake hand is a little bit different. So elbow bump, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, Josh mentioned something I think most of us recognize. Arkansas is a, a, a great place. And, uh, you know, one of the things that's interesting about it is it is a bit of a bubble. Um, you know, in some ways we're, we're shielded from, from, from the outrageous, you know, explosive highs, but we're also kind of shielded a bit from the lows. And so I, I would agree with, with that. 
Um, I think I heard the term uh, reshoring in that question. I'll, I'll circle back to that. I, I think I'm, I'm following what that question is about. But as far as just resiliency and making sure that we're uh, flexible and work tight, um, you know, I mentioned a while ago that, you know, AIA is saying healthcare and education are, are two market types that are, that are best suited to be resilient to this kind of downturn. And that, that's absolutely, those are two of our biggest market sectors. And of course, you said the worst is uh, retail and hospitality. Like, like Modus, we, we do very, very little uh, retail or hospitality work. Uh, we, we do also, uh, aside from healthcare and education, uh, we do a lot of, uh, believe it or not, corporate office uh, work and, and corporate headquarters and also quite a bit of civic work. Uh, and so I think, uh, you, you know, like Josh said, I think it's behooves all of us uh, in all of our respective industries and companies to, 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 to uh, you know, to be diverse in a sense helps, but also make sure you bolster market types that are resilient to economic downturns. And so we've been, I think we've been the beneficiary of, of being heavy in healthcare and education for the history of our, of our firm. I think that's, that's been relatively well insulated. And so we continue to do that. Believe it or not, and I don't think most people think of our practice of of doing this type type of thing, but we we, we have a, uh, a, a not a huge amount, but believe it or not, some industrial work that we do, and it seems like that's actually uh, been more prevalent the past several years. And and I'm involved uh, both directly and indirectly in in some work that's related to that now. And so, you know, I think I heard the term reshoring. I, I, I assumed that was referring to just you know, more insular econo economics uh, globally and, and what type of industries will, will maybe, you know, uh, you know, maybe kind of reshore in a sense or have more emphasis to be being done domestically. Uh, uh, you know, I think it, I think that's true. You know, the U S you know, 30 years ago shifted to a service based economy. And so, uh, you know, I think as far as if, if the, if I understood the term reshoring, I think that would probably be most directly impactful of, of industrial and manufacturing work. And we do a little bit of that, but not a lot. Uh, so, you know, I think that, I think that, but that certainly may impact many of the, the firms and people represented on this webinar today. I know, I know a lot of you guys do a lot of industrial work. And so I certainly think that um, for better or worse, um, you know, if, if more barriers come up, if that's accelerated by health, health, care issues and transmission issues, I think there certainly could be an impact on the industrial side of work for sure. And, and Wes, well, we have a, uh, to both of you, we have a, a question that was sent in uh, on the chat feature. I don't know if you guys can see yeah. it. Read yeah. It. Uh, yeah, James, I don't know how to necessarily answer that just yet. Um, you know, that that's a tougher question for me to kind of wrap my head around from that impact, you know. A lot of our projects, whether they're new construction or renovation, uh, come with a lot of different skill sets and the, the different people that we work with. And I think we've worked with most all major um, uh, contractors in the state. Um, from, from my experience in the last 11 years as MODIS, um, you know, at the end of the day, I think there is going to be a little bit of market reset and how do, you know, we are able to place workers. You know, what I remember in 2008 is that the market had reset and we started our business when everyone said that is so foolish to do that. But for us, we noticed that the trend was actually that there's plenty of work for just two of us. There's plenty of work um, to bid a mar in, in a market that is thirsty and our clients tend to win, right? The market uh, puts a lot of bidders out there. The numbers tend to come down and more people you know, are stimulated to work on the project. And they say, you know, the constant impact for per million dollars is like 200 people that work on a project per million dollars from what I understand. Those, those numbers might change uh, as we go forward. I, I'm not entirely sure right now what that looks like. But for what it's worth, I feel like the market does kind of reset. We're going to find an influx of people being readily available to be working in, in mm -hmm. the market uh, because maybe their jobs are impacted or it's changed. Um, you know, I, I do think people will be more aggressive than ever um, to be able to secure the work. And, you know, do I think that the constant price will always go down? No, I don't. Uh, right now, we're just so in the infancy of where we're at right now. I, I'd say in six months, we should pick this back up and just do a check and say, you know, do we really think this is where it is? Because right now we're still early on 
to really – I feel like there's so much still momentum that um, I can't really know that I can answer that. Yeah, James, I think that's a really, really good question. I'm not sure uh, – like – Josh said, I'm not sure I'm, I'm equipped to fully answer that. I will say, I, I know I recall from the 08 or 09. That left the construction industry, particularly skilled label, skilled, skilled labor, uh, and never came back. And that's really impacted us to today. I think that's part of why there's a labor shortage was really from uh, impact from the last downturn. And so, uh, you know, if there's some kind of way to tap into this displaced um, workers, you know, in the midst of this, uh, this downturn, um, that would be, uh, I think that would be a great investment long-term for the construction construction industry. Um, you know, I, I, there's certainly plenty of labor uh, displaced workers out there that certainly I think could be, uh, be a benefit to the construction industry for sure. Yeah. And, and not that I want to get on my own personal soapbox here. I worry about the labor shortage as well, because, um, if you look at uh, the unemployment and then you look at the bonus that the um, federal government is paying, I think it, it uh, de-incentivizes people to work. I think you've got right. folks that, uh, that are making more money now on unemployment than they, than they were when they're working. So that worries me about us being able to get those folks back off the unemployment rolls, right. back to work. And so, again, I don't want to jump on my own personal soapbox there, but I thought I'd mention that. <laughs> um, we had a great question that was text in that I'll, uh, I'll let you guys answer. Uh, material lead times. Has there been supply chain slowdown in materials and has that changed what materials are spec into project scopes in order to stay on schedule? I think the rumor is, <laughs> and I say it as a rumor, I think the rumor is that yes, it could impact us. Uh, we're on a few different projects where a few materials that we have already felt like we've secured, the plants in other states have shut down and they can't get the productions to us in time. I think that it's early on, but I do think that there will be a little bit of, hey, who can get it to us in an appropriate time? Um, what is the duration of construction impact look like? Um, so will it change our, you know, we're, we're kind of a performance-based spec it, when we when we try to design around products and mm -hmm. what we want to have on a project we, we try to make sure it's the best quality for the money uh, for the clients and inevitably those that can perform uh, tend to win right so at the end of the day do I think it will have impacts yeah I do in other states if states um, have a longer longevity of stay at home orders and things like that yeah I think there will be I have not seen it just yet other than a handful of small conversations that is kind of like, hey, it might be happening. We don't know yet. It might be a week later than we anticipated. So, yeah, we've had we've had a few issues. Um, you know, I'm, coincidentally, I'm I'm either working on projects that are nearing completion of construction, or we're in the middle of design. So I don't have any that are in the middle of construction personally right now. But I have heard, uh, you know, a, a few things in the office about some issues with 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 product delivery. I know one example on a project I am working on and it's nearing completion, but you know, we had some, some cork finish that had been partly delivered and partly installed from Italy and uh, we couldn't get the rest of it. You know, Italy was heavily impacted by, by COVID-19. And so, you know, in that case, you know, Josh is right. You know, we, we tend to try not to be too product specific or at least uh, manufacturing manufacturer specific in our, in our spe specifications, but we'd already installed half of it. So we looked at alternate alternate finishes, uh, resources in the U.S. and of course they don't match. So, and there's just a few, you know, it's just a minor thing, really in the big scheme of things. Um, you know, so I think right now it's just an inconvenience. If you know, I think the question is, does that turn into a bigger issue? Uh, uh, you know, it could. I think it really depends on on what happens. Uh, you, you know, long term. I, I don't want to get off in the weeds outside of my my lane on coloring drawing with coloring and drawing. So my wife describes what I do, you know, so, uh, but from a, from a, you know, science standpoint, I, I, from what I've read, I think the thing that could help impact us the best, it's going to take a while for a vaccine to be developed. But if there is a treatment that's developed that limits the fatality rate, uh, that's more likely to come online sooner than a vaccine. I think if something like that happens near term, I think the disruption to the supply chain and construction will be a lot 
will be mitigated. I think if for whatever reason, uh, treatments delayed and the vaccines delayed, I think the longer that goes on, uh, and if we are continuing to be disrupted by social distancing requirements, I think the longer that stretches, the more likely it'll impact uh, supply chain and material delivery issues for sure. It'll be interesting today to listen to the governor's press conference at 1.30. I think he's supposed to uh, make an announcement today about restaurants. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and from what I'm hearing, it's probably about uh, a restaurant's going to be able to open probably about 50% capacity. So if you have a, a, a wall of uh, um, booths on one side, you know, you can have, you can have this booth open, then you got to close the next two, mm -hmm. and the next one open, then close two. So, uh, and then have yeah. tables distance apart is kind of yeah. what I've heard. It's I'm tired of peanut butter sandwiches. So I'm, I'm ready to get outside. <laughs> so. And I am too. And I, I tell you, I've just, you know, this today has been helpful to me because, you know, I've literally missed the, the interaction, the social interaction. Yeah. Um, we at ABC, we do a lot of events, a lot of gathering and, and, you know, for me, just missing the people, being around the people. Um, so, yeah, this, this today has been, been really good. Um, do we have any more questions out there that, uh, that people may want to send in? It looks like we had one that just popped up, if you guys want to look at that. Uh, I'll read it out loud, Megan asked me to do. Contractors will be asked for a COVID-19 disease preparedness plan prior to starting a project. When do you see a standard plan being implemented? I know we at ABC, I'll just jump out here real quick. If that's something that you need as an ABC member, um, we've got that resource available. Uh, it came from ABC National. It's been through a couple of uh, their attorneys. So we do have a uh, COVID-19 disease preparedness plan available. If that's something you on the call need, if you will uh, email me at brochelle, R-O-A-C-H-E-L-L, -L, at abcart.org, I'd be more than happy to send you out what we have. Guys, any, any more do y'all have a comment on that? Well, I, I assume that has to do with, correct me if I'm wrong, just requirement, you know, job site requirements. Is that, is that, is that the question? Essentially? I believe that's what, what it implies, yeah. Yeah, the job site requirements. Yeah, that's interesting about a standard. You know, we've, uh, as I mentioned, we've got lots of projects under construction and wrapping up. And, of course, a lot of projects were caught sort of flat, you know, they're middle of construction and all of a sudden this, this happens. And so, you know, the response has been, you know, varied and, and different between projects and between contractors. And so I think that's a really fair question. You know, what the longer this, this, this protracts, you know, does there become a standard, um, uh, you know, preparedness plan required on, on a job site. And, uh, I haven't, uh, I haven't read a lot about that. Uh, but I can certainly see that being a, a good resource to develop a standard that, that, that contractors and design teams can, can apply to projects, uh, but I'm not aware of any. So that's a that's a that's a fair question. Yeah, I mean, from my perspective, um, we last week we had a, our first uh, pre bid meeting, virtual pre bid meeting. Usually, we're all in a cafeteria somewhere on a K twelve campus, and we're in a larger group talking about it. Um, it was very different, and one of those questions kind of came up: is what does it look like from the owner standpoint? You know, we're going to be now talking about bubbles as we move forward. You know, your family bubble, your work bubble, and then the public bubble. And when we invite ourselves on campuses and work on campuses, now that encroaches on the school bubble that may happen uh, in the future. So I think um, the K-12 market is probably poised to ask that as a bigger question is, you know, what are contractors and architects and engineers doing to limit exposure because you're coming out of another bubble entering into their campus, you know, how are we going to distance ourselves or how are we going to work where we maintain um, a good, uh, you know, area of, of seclusion away from some things. And so in my mind, I, I do think there will be some impacts or there's going to be some safety concerns uh, moving forward because I do think there's some new norms. I mean, the, the masks are something that are, even in our office we've implemented if you're going to be in a group, we prefer that, you know, for the safety of all of our team, that you wear a mask or keep a distance. And it's okay to have all of those things in place uh, because, you know, again, it impacts the second bubble, the, the work bubble. And if we can't work, you know, that impacts the greater whole. So I do think those things will be new to the industry and new requirements. I don't know how we implement them. I, I really don't. I think there's just some basic rule, you know, general rules of, you know, stay smart, 
you know, don't be afraid to say you're too close. Um, we've had four or five now school board meetings that were all remote. Um, and then I've had one or two that they don't, they don't do zoom. So they said, you know, we really would like to do it. And we got around in a parking lot. So, um, there's definitely impacts and safety is a big concern. Looks like we got about uh, eight minutes left. Um, Wesley, Josh, I'll give it to you guys just a, a chance here. If there's anything you want to add or, or any kind of closing comments, would uh, would love to hear what you guys have to say. I want to say thank you to everybody. Uh, appreciate you guys. It's an honor for uh, for me to participate with with ABC in this. I think these are very very valid questions. These are questions that that our partnerships have been asking as well. And it's it's hard to know, you know, what's the impact. And if I were you, and we always get lots of questions, I'm sure Josh can, can say this as well, we, we, we get uh, asked a lot, not, not just from, from contractors, but from suppliers and vendors, hey, what's your workload looking like? You know, because this, you know, your, your work is downstream of ours. And so it's a very timely and valid question to ask, what does it look like? Um, you know, I, I, I tend to be a glasses half full person. And so, uh, uh, you know, I hadn't, hadn't, uh, and I continue to remain that way about this. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm relatively optimistic that there'll be some good treatment methods available, but it's hard to say. You know, I, I'm I, I'm still concerned. You know, I think collectively, where as a practice, you know, you know, six to nine months, how does this impact uh, our workflow? You know, we're we're we we really value our our team and our firm. We're family, and so uh, it's a real personal thing for us. And of course, our workflow impacts, uh, you know, obviously the construction industry. Uh, you know, we're, we're all part of one big uh, 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 a team, as it were. And so uh, I think it's a shared concern we all have, and that is what is going to be the economic impact of this. Um, uh, you know, I think the statistics, if you just look at them at face value, are pretty sobering. Uh, you know, I, I read today that, uh, you know, they announced uh, uh, GDP contracted, I think, 4.8% first quarter. And that's just with March, you know, being impacted. Uh, the article I read shockingly said that, uh, in fact, I wrote this down, I think the, the uh, uh, yeah, the Congressional Budget Office predicts that the second quarter GDP may fall at an annualized rate of 40%, which would be, uh, you know, just, um, just shocking. Um, so, you know, those are sobering statistics. You know, on the other hand, that's, it's happened so quickly. You know, the basic fundamentals of the economy, uh, you know, nothing, nothing uh, structurally, uh, you, you know, was failing that caused this, this, uh, uh, this economic uh, downturn. It was, a, it was a self-imposed isolation practice, right? So I think part of the upside, maybe to look at that, you know, from a glass half full standpoint is uh, that quick, a uh, quick downturn was self-imposed and hopefully the reverse could be true. You know, hopefully if, uh, uh, if we find effective ways to, in a combination of testing and, and treatment, uh, that hopefully people, uh, their economic out, outlook will, uh, uh, will, will not be too diminished and, and work can continue. So I, I remain, you know, relatively optimistic considering everything and I, I hope that I'm right, but, uh, I appreciate you guys uh, asking, uh, me to participate and us to participate. It's an honor. Hopefully we've, we've, shed a little bit of light on kind of what we're doing and how we're adapting and how that might impact. Well, we're honored to have you on, Wesley. I appreciate you making the time. Yeah. Jason, Josh, I was looking at Jason's name there. <laughs> Josh, I'll turn it over to you uh, to kind of close us out. Yeah, no problem. Well, thank you. And, you know, like Wesley, we really do appreciate uh, being able to have a voice. Um, and I know it's very early. You know, we're, we're within two months of this new norm and trying to ask questions ourselves as we try to lead our firms, uh, lead our families and the industry as a whole. Um, one of the clients that I, uh, working with, she brought up a, a good point. She said, you know, I don't want to pause our project. I want our project to be the thing that keeps people moving. And, um, I, I really love that roll up your sleeve attitude. I'm, that's why Wesley and I get along so well is that I'm, I'm one to say, Hey, let's figure it out and make it work. Um, we almost never say no to something unless the factors just are so against us because I always believe in the optimism of, of what we can do as a group. Mm -hmm. I've worked with a lot of people in this group. I, I recognize probably 15 of you uh, in the crowd. And so um, I've always appreciated working with people because I, I believe that, you know, the spirit of work unifies people and brings people together. And 
um, you know, we all try to serve a purpose. And so as the industry changes, I know we will adapt. We'll be optimistic and always ready for the next thing. Um, at the same time, we just try to be realistic too. And so despite what the economy is doing, I think we're always asking ourselves, how can we be a leader in our industry? How can we help raise the bar for what we're trying to do? And I think that's directly impacted with people on this call. I see people that are those industry leaders as well. And so I'd just say, stay resilient, stay uh, effective and keep pushing. Um, never stop pushing. So no problem. I'll turn it over to Megan. She's got a few closing words, but again, thank you all for being on. Megan, I'll turn it over to you. Six feet, six yeah, feet, six Bill. Feet. <laughs> well, guys, I just want to thank you both. Thank you, Wesley and Josh, again, for, for being here today. Uh, it was a great conversation, a very much needed connection with some of our members as well. So um, just on your positivity and optimistic note, uh, Bill and Justin and I have discussed a lot about, you know, just being invested in ourselves during this time, trying to show our value and know our value and, and keeping a positive uh, forward motion uh, going on through all of this. So I love your attitude and we're trying to stick to the same thing because, you know, it's gonna be good again. We'll get there we, and we, we're so excited to celebrate that time when it comes around. So uh, appreciate everyone for being on the call today. And just so you know, ABC is, still in full force. We're just trying to be a resource right now. So we, we will continue to do a few of these webinars. We've got a great resource page on our website for COVID-19 uh, issues. So if there's anything you need, you know, we're a hub for information, for resources, for templates, for things like that safety plan on the job site. So you don't know until you ask. So please, if there's anything you're struggling with, uh, anything you want to know more about or want to know what other people are seeing, architects to GCs to subs to everything in between, please reach out because we, we have lots of wonderful people that we're connected with and we'd love to help you connect with them as well. So uh, with, that, with that being said, I guess everyone can enjoy the rest of their Wednesday and thank you all so much and we look forward to when we can see you again.